Cheers to you guys. It is Friday night and we are talking final order cutoff. Welcome to the last call show. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian and Jack with Simple Man's Comics, where we are helping to amplify your comic book collection through integrity and community. This is The Last Call Show, where we are talking comic books that are hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday night, Monday, December 9th, 2019. We're going to talk about 10 picks, and then at the end, Jack's going to talk about the later printings we got coming on. And then again, if you want to see the full final order cutoff list, I'm talking comic books, I'm talking trades, I'm the bus, I'm talking cards, I'm talking toys. That full list will be up at simplemanscomics.com, so head over there and check that out after this video. But our first pick we're going to get into is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number two. This has a bunch of different covers for it. You're going to have those turtles and helmet covers. You're going to have that regular cover, but what we like on this also is there's a 1 in 25 incentive as well as a 1 in 50 incentive variant. Yeah, and I, I couldn't be more excited to read issue number two. I talked on the Bolo show about how number one was my long-term play of the week. And if you weren't, if you didn't watch, if you if I wasn't clear enough, really this entire series I look at as a solid long-term play. It's one I'm very excited about. It's one I think is is only the beginning of a relationship between these two properties. And um, we talked about how this is kind of an evil Tommy story, right? Tommy's working with the Foot Clan. But in issue number two, he's going to deal with a shocking betrayal within the Foot that is going to put him at odds with Shredder. I think this is going to add a nice element. I think we all kind of expect Tommy to come around by the end of the story, but we'll have to see. And it'll be really interesting to see if they get Lord Draken involved in this story at some point. Um, but either way... Excited for this one. Excited for some of those incentive covers, especially that foil incentive cover. We're going to get Babyface to heel turn. Back to Babyface. Who knows what's going on. Either way, issue one was great. Looking forward to the second issue. In fact, this is going to be one of those ones where I not only get it in floppy, but if it comes out in a hardcover collector edition, I'm going to be picking it up then as well. Absolutely. So here we have Daphne Byrne number one. This is on that DC Black label. Also comes from that like Joe Hill Presents imprint. This is also going to be written by Laura Marks. She has written TV episodes such as Ray Donovan, The Expanse, and The Good Fight. It's going to have a regular cover. There's also a Yasmin Putri variant for this. Yeah, this is a real interesting solicitation talking about the gaslit splendor of the 19th century New York. Rage builds inside the 14-year-old Daphne. The sudden death of her father has left her alone with her irresponsible, grief-stricken mother who becomes easy prey to a group of occultists promising to contact her dead husband while fighting to disentangle her mother from these charlatans. Daphne begins to sense a strange, insidious presence within her own body, an entity with unstoppable appetites. What does brother want? And can she even stop him if she tried? And uh, these these horror titles from Hill House Productions have been really popular. And we talked about how they... they could possibly be the type of small brand imprint that would be ripe for optioning. But either way, horror has been hot amongst readers, and readers have loved these Hill House books. Right, and it's weird because DC Black Label is definitely going all in, especially with these Joe Hill Presents. Yeah. I really enjoyed Basketful of Heads, Dollhouse. I was kind of like, eh, but I'll pick this one up as well to read it. I like horror books. Horror books are hot right now, and DC's doubling down. Now, here's a book just definitely looking at the solicit. Intrigued me. Looking forward to pick this up. It is a mini series, and we are talking about the clock number one. Right. This is a Top Cow production through Image Comics, and it's by writer Matt Hawkins, who's from the popular series Postal. And this one's talking about within three weeks, hundreds of millions of healthy people worldwide contract various forms of aggressive cancer. And the proliferation, seemingly, of a viral outbreak stumps the best scientific minds available. After uh, a leading cancer researcher loses his wife and watches his nine-year-old daughter succumb to the same illness, 
he must race against the clock to end a global conspiracy that could propel the world straight into World War III or worse. So that's where the term the clock in the title comes from. Gives you almost like a little doomsday clock feel here, um, but with a, a little bit of a, a virus outbreak, uh, almost similar to the strain minus that whole vampire type thing. But uh, the series definitely seems interesting. Seems like one that could be a great read. Four issue miniseries. Um, and uh, art on this one is by Colleen Duran. Magnificent Miss Marvel number 11. Now, just this week, we talked about issue number 10 that just came out. We talked about her first appearance in that issue. But what do we got going on with number 11, Jack? Well, this one really piggybacks off the success of issue number 10. This issue is talking about a monster of Miss Marvel's own making. It's wrecking havoc on New Jersey. Her father's clinging uh, desperately to life. And she's got to make a decision between those who are close to her and the task at hand. And this one really is all about that first appearance of Storm Ranger. Um, we got that last page, slap, splash page reveal in issue 10. And I'll tell you, Brian, you know how I feel about those comic politicians. But as soon as issue 10 came out they were and it dried up and wasn't available and you couldn't get it and you started to see prices hit $10, $15, we already had people out there saying, well, it's not really a first appearance. It's a cameo. And issue 11 is a first appearance. So... What I've always said is, if you really want that first appearance, if you want to make sure you're on the right side of the market, play it safe and grab both. So if you grab 10 and you're, it's a grab and hold for you, I would say go ahead and grab 11 just to be safe. Put them together. Um, that's usually the best way to go. And you have a great opportunity. It's one of the reasons why we do this show is because Monday is FOC. You have this weekend window where you can put in that order. Make sure you're locked in just in case 11 starts to see that heat the way 10 did. You will be okay. Get back over to Dark Horse with that small press. We have Kill Whitey Donovan number two. We also just talked about issue number one that came out this past week. We even talked about issue number one on this very show for Last Call. Recently was option for possible movie. But number one issue, fantastic. Everything I talked about on the Last Call definitely supported that. Glad I picked it up. Glad I gave it a read. But we got issue number two hitting Last Call Monday night. There's a regular cover as well as a regular priced variant. Yeah, and you know, this is one of those things where we know this book's already been optioned. We know this book is on its way to a future movie release. And this is one of those things where it's good timing here as we have FOC coming up for issue number two. This is a story about a journey two characters are going on with a mission at hand. I think we're likely to meet new characters as these issues go on. So that's something to keep in mind as this book goes and eventually becomes a movie. We may have some first appearances in issue two or issue three. Um, but with independent comics, a lot of times it, it, it's your best bet to go ahead and lock in those first few issues, especially when you know that there's an option. And also, here's the other thing. Um, if you read issue number one, most people raved about it. So uh, I think a lot of people are going to be on board to read issue number two. It'll be interesting to see. But this, I think Dark Horse has a real winner on their hands with this one. Yeah, and huge shout out to the writer, Sydney Duncan, who's done a phenomenal job. I mean, she's Absolutely. already known for her writing, right? <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny how many novelists are now stepping into the uh, comics realm and finding instant success. Young Justice number 12. I've mentioned it on this channel before, how Young Justice is probably my favorite Brian Michael Bendis comic to read right now. And this issue, they got this Wonder Comics crossover where you're going to have Young Justice, Naomi, and the Wonder Twins all together in this issue. I'm looking forward to this. It's got the regular cover, but it also has a regular price variant by Nick Bradshaw. Yeah, I think Young Justice is flying under most people's radars. The last issue had an amazing Nick Bradshaw cover that had Naomi front and center that I thought is one of the most like stealth, awesome variants that's been released in the last several weeks by DC Comics. But I think this one is going to be a big Wonder Comics crossover that I don't expect to get a lot of attention. And for, because of that, I think it's going to have a kind of a lower print run. But it's one that I think down the road could be something to keep an eye out for especially as DC continues to pump energy and effort into this Wonder Comics imprint. 
Yeah, and I will say if you are a fan of like the Teen Titans type books and you haven't read Young Justice, give it a try. And if you are reading it, let us know in the comments what do you guys think about this title. So here we have a little one-off. This is a one-shot. I'm a fan of Miles Morales, Spider-Verse movies, everything that's been going on. Miles Morales is kind of popular, but this isn't your typical Miles Morales, right? This is the end of Miles Morales. Right. This kind of leads into kind of like a future story. It could be kind of, I think it's being released kind of coming right on the heels of 2099 as we're in these kind of futuristic setting stories. This will probably be the first appearance of Old Man Miles. I could see it being kind of titled that. And it's one of several one shots where we're getting kind of a glimpse into one of our favorite heroes future, specifically towards the end. And uh, it will we'll really be interesting with any of these one shots. And I think Miles will be probably one of the favorites, if not the favorite. I like that it's being written by the regular writer of the Miles Morales series. Is Will any of these individual series become a long-term kind of book? I think, you know, something like Old Man Logan that was supposed to be kind of like a, a temporary story has certainly spawned into a regular character. Will an older version of Miles become a character that we were talking about on a regular basis? Or will it just live in die with one issue we will have to wait and see but i know that if you're a fan of this character this is going to be a story you're going to want to read for sure yeah and if you're a fan of the artist raza he's the one that's doing the regular cover on this as well Then here we have Batman number 86. This is the kickoff of James Tenney in the fourth run. It's going to have that regular cover, but it also has that B cover by Francesco Mattina. Right, and this is starting a whole new storyline. So Bane's gone. Now we have a Deathstroke story. Deathstroke's got a whole new contract, something mysterious. Uh, one of Batman's allies is no longer here. The key to this is this may be Batman 86, Brian, but the reality is this is Batman number one. This is a kind of an entirely new thing this is a total reboot um we're going to be starting the path of james tinian so i think that no matter whether you're a lapsed batman reader maybe maybe you were a scott snyder fan um but you stopped because for whatever reason you didn't like tom king it's well documented on this channel i'm a big tom king fan but i know a lot of you out there aren't i think that batman 86 is one i would encourage everyone who considers themselves a batman fan at all pick this issue up this is one to grab. This is one to check out and read. And the other thing is you may want to pre-order it. And, I, and I'm strongly encouraging pre-ordering because I expect the print run to be pretty similar in line to what the book is normally printed because it's not a number one. It's in number 86. But with James Tinian taking over, he's going to be putting his vision into the book, which could equal new characters, new events, um, you know, Anything really could happen. And it's also important to know, if you are a big Scott Snyder fan, James Tinian really kind of sat under that learning tree with Scott Snyder. They co-wrote some books together. Um, he kind of came up under Scott Snyder at DC Comics. So I have high hopes for James Tinian's run. Shout out to Tom King. I'm still a big fan. I'll be excited to read the Batman and Catwoman book. But I think James Tinian IV is a great writer, and I think he's going to take the helm at Batman and do what, big things with it. This is probably going to be the biggest book for Marvel for this final order cutoff. And we're talking about star number one. Everyone's well aware of it coming out of Captain Marvel, except for me, because I'm still not reading that book yet. But I promise to pick it up in the trade. But this is going to have the regular cover. There's a J. Scott Campbell cover. There's also a 1 in 25, a 1 in 50, 1 in 100, and 1 in 200 variants for this. Yeah, and star has been honestly an absolute revelation since debuting in Captain Marvel number eight. Uh, over the last four months, we have seen each book go to later printings. We've seen stores create store exclusives surrounding Captain Marvel. And we're, and that's rare to see in, in the kind of middle, quote unquote, of a run issues eight to 12. Um, we've seen a character that has captivated audience that has sparked debate about, you know, heroes, villainry, what side of the table she's really going to end up sitting on. And all of this has spawned a brand new solo series. And Marvel's definitely bringing out the big guns when it comes to heavyweight cover artists 
working on this one. It's been a while since we've seen such a like a high ratio J. Scott Campbell, but it's another situation where there's a cover price version and then we get the high ratio. Um, so that's I think that's a little disappointing because we've talked about this before on the channel that that kind of takes away a little bit from it. But either way, I think that there's going to be a lot of stores ordering heavy on Star. Um, I would be careful. It's not a first appearance. You know, we've already we've already seen that. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of store exclusives. Um, I would be cautious when buying these uh, these incentives. Uh, try to buy them as cheap as you can. Uh, certainly don't pay over ratio whatsoever. And I would try to pay under ratio, to be honest with you. And that's one of the reasons, again, why we do the FOC show. is to be able to talk about books like this and kind of not only tell you our excitement as readers, but also give buyers caution because there will be a lot of hype around this release and you know with a lot of hype tends to come overpaying and you want to try to avoid that FOMO as best you can right but if you are interested in getting graded copies of this our channel sponsor slabbedhairs.com does have these up on his weekly foc list so make sure you check that out as well yeah and that's one of the best ways to be able to have those books before anyone else does by pre-ordering the graded copy and you can usually be first to market We mentioned how Star was the big one from Marvel, and this week, the big one for DC is going to be Wonder Woman. We are at issue number 750. This is going to be a big 96-page issue. Also, keep in mind, the MSRP on this is $9.99. There's going to be a regular cover, but then there's also going to be a variant, just like they've done previously with some of these big DC books. There's a variant for each decade. Yeah, and I know that a lot of people have been burnt um, buying heavily on Action Comics 1000 or Detective Comics 1000. And I think the key is like, these aren't, this is not an investment book whatsoever. This buy is the one op- you want, right? right? Buy the one you want, the decade you want, the artist you want. It, buy the decade of Wonder Woman that speaks to you. And I think that it's different for every person. Yeah. Um, I, I, for, you know, for me, the most iconic memory for me of Wonder Woman is when Adam Hughes was doing his run. But I think it's going to be different. Brian Boland for, for me. Yeah, see, and it's going to be different for different people. And I'll be honest with you, when it came to like the Detective Comics covers, I was grabbing multiple different ones because DC really brings out the big guns for these. They really do a good job of bringing in artists who are synonymous with the character. I love, and in full disclosure, I love both Action Comics 1000 and Detective Comics 1000. I think as a program as a, a, a product marketed to a collector base, I think they did a great job with both of them. Um, I like the fact that they go to the legacy numbering for these yeah. big, iconic issues. In the Action um, Comics one, I remember there was a little bit of issue there with their marketing because didn't it start out like it was going to be like uh, hardcover collectors and all this other stuff, and they finally went... I remember back a while yeah, ago. Yeah, they, they, they switched it, and then they, it seemed, they seemed to find their groove. So then with Detective Comics... 1000 um they knew exactly what they were doing and i think now they've got a system in place for how to do these books um they'll definitely be larger they'll definitely be collaborative efforts amongst a lot of different people who have worked with the character before um but i think really to me brian they're just a celebration of the character and that's what these landmark issues should be for so like i said i like the fact that they go to the legacy numbering i like the fact that they bring in artists who are synonymous with the character at different points in the character's run um i think they're fun yeah there'll be a lot of store exclusives um there'll be some amazing ones um uh, and i think the decades will be fun do i think that ultimately a lot of these books will end up on um, next year's black friday 75 percent off list absolutely yes. <laughs> no zero doubt zero doubt um, but either way, I, I think to me, the, this is a prime example though, of a fun collectible. And at some point you want to take out the monetary side of it and look and go, um, if you ever felt something positive for this character, if this was ever a character that you were invested in a run, um, and then when I say invested, I mean emotionally invested where you were reading it or collecting all the covers, um, this is an opportunity to get a book that kind of reminds you of that. Yeah, it's pretty monumental to have 750 issues of a comic. So, Absolutely. I 
think that this character is going to be around for another 750 issues. So there's our 10 picks, but like we always do, we got some additional prints that are coming out for this final order cutoff that Jack's going to mention as well. That's right. And we just came past Red Mother number one, the second print. And now Boom Studios has solicited Red Mother number one, the third print. I've read this book. If you haven't checked it out, this is one you're going to want. That's um, actually Jack's Marv- favorite boom book right now. It is my favorite boom book. I'm very excited about this one. Um, and Marvel now, they're coming with a whole slate. They gave us a couple light weeks. Not this week. They are back. Excalibur number two, second print. Fallen Angels number one, second print. Immortal Hulk number 26, the second print. Incoming number one, the second print. Marauders number two, a second print. Morbius number one, a second print. And Powers of Ten number six, the second print. So there it is. Those are the additional printings. Also remember that full FOC list outside of comics. We're talking toys, comics, cards, everything. You can find that full FOC list up at simplemanscomics.com. And remember, check with your LCS. Get these orders in before Monday night at 10 p.m. If you don't have an LCS, you can check with our channel sponsor sites, frankiescomics.com, as well as slabbedheroes.com as well. So thank you to everybody in the Simpleman's Comics YouTube family. Thank you to our sponsors, Frankie's Comics and Slab Heroes, who are, are making those bolo boxes possible. Thank you to our Patreons out there. And again, you can get those Bolo boxes at patreon.com forward slash simple men's comics. And make sure you are subscribed and hit that notification bell to be notified when new content is dropping on the channel because we have a lot of big things planned for the end of the year going into 2020. I'm Jack DeMeo, aka Mr. Bolo. He's Brian Wood, and this is Simple Men's Comics. (laughs) 